Hello everyone, it is Canadian Futures Trader here. It's currently April 2nd, 2021. It's Friday evening and I've been spending a good part of my day digging into my statistics for the month of March for the year to date and for my trading journey to date. Uh, I'm going to show you how I do that or at least kind of touch on it a little bit. But one of those stats that I like to track is MAE. If you're not familiar with MAE, don't worry, I'm going to explain what it is. Uh, this is one that I never really understood until about... I don't know, five months ago maybe? Uh, most of 2020, I would see the statistic and some of the various trading programs, had no idea what it meant, kind of didn't care. I focused mainly on win-loss and what was my overall profitability. At one point though, I said, you know what? I should really figure out what this means. And uh, it turns out is actually fairly useful. So uh, there's MAE and MFE. They are basically go hand in hand. I focus more on MAE. Let's get into it. ME stands for Maximum Adverse Excursion. I just brought up a random site that had the definition, by the way. Uh, this isn't my site or anything. Uh, MAE marks the lowest price during a long trade or the highest price during a short trade. So it helps you identify what the maximum loss was during a trade. Um, so let's look. Their little chart here is probably the best example. So, uh, I mean, this is for Google stock, but I mean, the, the concept applies to anything that you trade, including futures. So... This is a running profit loss. So imagine they opened a trade here, it kind of went profitable, came back to break even, more profitable, then went down, kind of came back up. Fast forward, here's the lowest point it hit. That is your MAE. Let's just run through the rest of it. It then recouped, went back to break even, came up, hit this high, that's your MFE, and then this is where they closed out the trade. So looking at this trade and by the way mfe is maximum favorable excursion so favorable means you know what's the best you could have done adverse the worst you could have done in this trade so in this trade they opened for zero they closed it right here which looks like let's call it three thousand in profit so if you were to just look at this trade on paper you'd say that was a three thousand dollar profitable trade fantastic well looking at mfe and mae you could have at one point pulled out for about $4,000. Actually, it's a little bit above that. It was $4,200, whatever it is. But even more important, at one point, you were down almost $8,000. Not quite here. Let's call it uh, $7,000. So your MAE is $7,000. Your MAFE is $4,200. And you closed at $3,000. This kind of tells a different story. This tells a little bit more of a story of what was the high and the low, essentially, relative to where you got out. Now, where this can come in use... And why I don't focus as much on MFE is because I'm typically trading the bonds. I don't get a lot of, like, upside that I miss out on, you know? Like, it might go up a tick or two and then start to come back down and I'm out. So I don't miss out on a lot of that. Kind of like this trade, you know? Like, it finally went up high, it started coming down, this person closed out. So I'm not as worried about this. This is the number that I am most interested in for myself. I want to know how much was I risking and what did I eventually get out of the trade for. So... Let's look at my stats. Now, how I look at my stats, and this isn't a plug for these guys. I mean, I use TraderView. There's several trading, journaling, slash statistics, uh, you know, sites and softwares out there. Um, Edgewonk is one. Journalytics is one. Uh, I can't really think. I know there's another one as well that I'm not thinking of, but um, I ended up going with TraderView. It's not the most flashy site, but it does like a ton of stuff the more i dig in i'm I, like i'm amazed at how in depth you can get with this basically what i do every day is when i'm done trading i download my basically my trades and it depends on which program you're using but they give you instructions actually on how to do it but like in rhythmic i just download my recent uh executions i think it's called you import them into here and boom, it sorts out all the statistics. It figures out what your MFE and your MAE and, you know, your average profitability and everything else. So um, I am, I use the silver plan. So I will mention the free plan. You can't do futures, I believe. So, yeah, right here, it's only pretty much stocks. Um, you have to kind of go with the paid plan to get futures. So it's 30 bucks a month U.S., I think it's money well spent. Again, you know, you could as well document this stuff yourself, track it manually, track it in Excel, use a different program, whatever you want. Uh, the gold level, you pay 20 extra dollars a month, you get a little bit more, it'll track your commissions and whatnot, do a little bit more analysis. 
Uh, I tried it out honestly for a month. I didn't feel like I was really getting that much out of it. So even though it's only 20 bucks more, I really wasn't using the extra features. So I went back down to the silver level. So I paid 30 bucks a month and I can analyze my stats to my heart's content, which believe me, I do. I probably by far spend more time analyzing my trades and my stats and looking for areas to improve than I do actually in trades, believe it or not. So um, let's look at, let's get to, so I'm not going to go through, this isn't like a tutorial about trade review. It does a lot of cool stuff. Um, but what I'm going to show you here is I've already brought up. So when you're in and I import my trades, now I only started importing my trades about October 2020. So this isn't my entire trading career if you will but it is the more recent six months and i feel like that's probably a little bit more reflective of how i trade now versus if i did have those first you know the entire year you know i've, I've come a long way let's put it that way so um i have this filtered you can search so i have uh, ub star so you can use wild cards left all the dates everything else open so this is basically every single ultra bond trade i've ever made i've made close to 400 trades and let's get to it so um, they have quite a few charts and graphs. Like, again, I don't want to go through everything. You can look at all kinds of stuff. You can look at detailed, you know, stuff. You can compare one month to another month, blah, 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 blah. Uh, for this chart, though, uh, I selected, I wanted to see what was here on the y-axis, my P&L per share slot or tick, you know. So basically, on average, how much do I make? How many ticks do I make on a trade? Compared to my MAE, the thing we just talked about. Oops, I guess I can't highlight. Uh, MAE. So, essentially, when trades start going against me, and you see over here on the right, it starts at zero. So, two ticks, or minus two ticks, I should say. Minus four, minus six, minus eight, minus ten. list goes on. Versus how many ticks did I make? The reason I'm doing this in ticks and not dollar signs is because I'm all over the place on dollar signs. You know, these trades include every single trader evaluation I've done, every single funded account that I've worked on, my own personal account where I've traded Ultra Bond. So I might trade like one lots or two lots in my own account because the margins on the things are expensive, but I might trade like, tw you know, 12 lots in like Lilu. So uh, the dollars don't really, aren't a great way to kind of compare apples to apples. I just want my, my strip down stats. Like what am I making? tick by tick so um or to put it another way you know if i trade 10 lots and get one tick profit out of it versus i trade one lot and get three ticks profit well technically the three tick profit was like a better trade like i had a better trade there but dollar wise the 10 lot at one tick will you know in aggregate dollar wise be higher so that's why i want to strip this down to ticks hopefully that makes sense so what you're looking at here is I have something clicked here called scale data points by P&L. So I mentioned I have almost 400 trades. There's obviously not 400 circles on here. That's because there's a lot of overlapping. Like there might be several trades where, you know, I made two ticks and my MAE was also minus two. So um, I'll just untick this actually for a second so you can see what it looks like. So it looks like this when they're not. So this, you, again, you look at this, you go, there's no way there's almost 400 trades there. It's because there's probably a ton piled up on top of each other at these specific points. Uh, when you click on this, it gives you a little bit more of a, I don't know what you call this, not really heat map, but uh, you know, it gives you bigger circles when there's more data there. So this is very useful because right away, my eyes are drawn to this area, to this, and really to this. So what is happening, happening here? And then we're gonna try to pull some information out of this. So. Right off the bat, let's take a look. So we know that this is zero. So this is MAE. This is how many time, how many ticks a trade went against me. So let's just start here. Any time, well not any time, but when a trade is two ticks against me, here's the results that I had if you look above here. So there was a few trades where if we come across, I lost two ticks. So those are probably ones where I stopped out, right? It went two ticks against me, I stopped out. Basically, the trade went down two ticks, and that's where I got out. So my MAE also just so happens to equal what my loss was. But then you had other trades where it came down two ticks. My MAE was two ticks. It went against me two ticks at some point, but then it came back, and I was profitable. So just looking like at this kind of vertical, 
I had a lot more activity where it went two against me, but it bounced back up. So I, I wish the zero was kind of highlighted, but basically the, the zero line is right here. I mean, you can kind of tell the, the red's below it, the green's above it. I had a lot of trades that went, went positive after the fact. I mean, this one even went 14 ticks positive. So, uh, and it looks like there was more than one here. So, you know, a MAE of minus two, isn't so bad. And I would say that's fair. You know, I, I mean, trades aren't always going to go in our favor. That's why I want to look at this. So, uh, again, to, I mean, here when ME is zero, like I don't even care about that. That means they just went positive from, from the start. Um, so let's see. So going across, so minus three would be here. So what I'm kind of looking at is, you know what? Like, yeah, we had a few losers, but there's a lot more winners up here. And, you know, some of them are fairly substantial, you know, 10 ticks, etc. Uh, here, what you know, what's happening here? So let's skip over four. Let's look at five. This looks like it's about five ticks. A lot of losers. So it's in the kind of four to five range here. And there's obviously several winners, but the winners are at about the six tick winner. So at about the five MAE, five tick MAE, a lot of action in here, a lot of action in here, and that's kind of about the range of it. So to think of this, you know, I like to look at this and think about the actual trades that would happen to make these results. So for example, when we start getting trades, you know, down here in the minus five, minus six, I'm not seeing a lot of winners up here, you know? Um, this was kind of a big one, but I'm not seeing anything up here versus here where you had only minus two, minus one, you're getting some big wins. So basically what's happening, just to kind of bring it back here, so we might have had a trade that went minus one. It went, you know, one tick against us from our entry point. But then we had, a, they turned around and they went positive. A lot of these went positive. Almost everything that went minus one. Actually, it looks like there's one point in here. The rest of them turned around and went positive. Good stuff. Start getting out here, that minus five, minus six. Not getting as big of winners. Looks like we had a bunch of winners here at the six tick win rate. How about we come out here when it when the trade is minus six we're getting stopped out a lot it looks like and not a ton of winners uh, up here especially nothing really in here so and the story goes on i mean it only gets kind of worse from there so um minus eight ticks minus 10 ticks minus 12 ticks i'm seeing a lot of red i'm seeing even less green up here there's one like crazy outlier out here um, I can already tell you these trades are definitely trading combine ones where I just went on tilt. Like a trade went, you know, like looks like 19 ticks against me. I am not doing that with my own money or with the funded account money. I can guarantee you that. And the best one I think is this one because this one went 22 ticks against me and somehow, some way came back and I made 10 ticks on it. Uh, and yeah, the dot is small. That was a one time uh, event. Most likely this was a Hail Mary, screw my account, like I'm either, like this trade is either busting me or going to give me a profit and this one just kind of worked out, but that's not the right way to trade. Um, so I think like kind of using like a, kind of a cutoff, if you will, I mean, and that's ultimately what I wanted to get out of this. I want to look at this and say, okay, like where, where should I be setting my stop? Because I typically set, I would say about a three to four tick stop in the bonds. Might not always be the case though. So, but where does the data tell me that I should be setting a stop? Well, when I'm coming down here, I'm definitely hitting my stop, but I'm hitting my stop a lot and I'm not getting a lot of turnarounds that come back up and uh, give me a profit. So, who knows how many of these, if say I had had a seven tick stop instead, would have maybe recovered. Chances are though, this would probably still be pretty grim. I think if anything, this just reinforces for me, four ticks is about right. You know, you kind of put a, imagine, I wish you could draw on this chart. That's one thing that I wish you could do here. Um, put an imaginary vertical line here. If only the information to the right was kind of valid, let's say I just, hands down four tick stop always i mean this looks ridiculous ton of green not much red i like that i really like that i don't like this this is like a ton of red and some big green here i kind of wish i knew what was happening here but um so i think the the big take and then this stuff is like just total outlier stuff i should never be having like eight tick ten tick you know mfe or uh maes anyways um, and again, it looks like a few of those. So say like a trade that went 10 ticks against me, 
I actually came back. This one was like a seven tick winner. This one was like a 10 tick winner. But you know what? These are out, these were like a few times. These were like random events. This is obviously where the bulk of the activity is happening. And so ignoring all this stuff, which I shouldn't even be entertaining at this point, just in trading, I think there's a very logical case to be made for a four tick stop loss. So that's kind of my, uh, how I look at this, if you will. I don't know if that helps anyone. Uh, this is obviously like a nice visual kind of representation of it. You can get into like the actual numbers and stats as well. And um, there's like, gra you can map this other way. You can do like charts and graphs and other ways. But uh, I kind of like this because I think it visually just kind of really shows like put the cutoff here, four ticks. Hey man, I, I love it. Um, you know, this is not bad at all. So, um, Hopefully you got something out of that. If you're interested in TraderView, I recommend it. I'm not, I don't have a special link, a special discount, anything like that. Um, I really like it. I know some of the big prop firms, if you've ever heard of SMB Capital, they're out of New York. They do a ton of YouTube content. Um, they are more of an in-person prop firm, so they're not quite like top step and one up and all those, but um, they, all their traders use TraderView as well. Uh, and like I mentioned, there's a million ways you can slice and dice your data. So I, if you're that type of person that likes to dig into this stuff and dig into some numbers, highly recommend it, uh, for 30 bucks a month. I think it was, yeah. Um, I can entertain myself for hours with that, if anything. And I, if anything, it just, it reinforce it reinforces things that I, that I knew already, but it's good to sometimes revisit it and go, yes. This is why I have a four tick stop. This is why I need to put in a four tick stop. This is why I need to not let it slide. Oh, let it go to five ticks, six ticks, because you're probably going to hit it. And guess what? This is what happens. So you get two big red eyeballs staring right at you and you don't want that. So, all right, guys, this video is long enough. I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, everybody have a terrific weekend and I will continue to make some videos for you guys next week. <laughs>